Oh boy. So, Yo, you're too heavy. Frost, you're too heavy. Frost, you're too heavy. Get out. Turn north. So, what do we actually have for. Oh my god. This is a terrible idea. Pirates. Well, I mean, that was amazing. Rip. Rip. Rest in peace. Hey guys, I saw a bear here, and today I'll be talking about update 25 for Foxhole. This update sees fewer changes, but ones that everyone is going to notice. First off, when you're first logging in, you'll be greeted with a new login experience. You can now select the game shard from the first screen rather than having to go to a subsequent screen to access this menu. Next up is the new lobby screen. This new screen includes integrated player profiles, basic war statistics that are shown, mainly it shows your contribution to the current ongoing war, and a redesigned faction select screen. Additionally, this screen is shown only once per war. In subsequent logins, you will automatically be taken to the game for the faction you selected the first time. You will also notice the event browser is no longer available. However, that's not to say there won't be events that people can participate in in the future. Now for the battlefields. The archaeology department has dug up a new vehicle type that we can put to use in the war effort. This relic vehicle is known as the staff car. It was pretty standard civilian transportation back in the day. But generally in battlefields, it's used by officers to reach the front lines quickly and to deliver emergency supplies. It features two seats, the passenger seat and the driver's seat. The staff car also features 10 item slots. Now its on-road performance is far better than its off-road performance, but similar to the motorcycle and despite its beat up look, holding down the sprint key will give it a boost along straight roads. This piece of junk really can gun it down a road ridiculously fast. Now, during the resistance phase, a new type of materials has been added. This is the strong materials. These materials are special for their durability and used to build structures that can persist between wars. These strong materials can be found at town halls that are captured from the enemy. They will not be in town halls that are claimed during the initial uprisings. But if the resistance faction manages to capture an enemy town hall, or vice versa, then they will gain access to some amount of strong materials. The newest structure that we can build thanks to the R&D department in conjunction with these strong materials is the supply cache. The supply cache is an underground storage bunker used to preserve items for future conflicts. Instead of storing single items like a rifle or a pistol, these function to store crates that can persist into the next war. In these supply caches, there are 15 slots, but they can only hold certain kinds of crates, and these crates are not stackable. So, for example, if you put two crates of revolvers stashed away for the next war, those two crates will take up two slots. And these are only available during the resistance phase. For all you resistance fighters out there, if you are placing these things down, make sure to keep them close to home territory and make sure they are well hidden. These will only give you a small bonus for the next war. And there is a possibility they could be destroyed by the enemy. So place them in strategic locations where they might give you an advantage. Nice shooting. Lastly, the vehicle factory visuals have been updated. There were some bug fixes along with this update, but I'll save that for the patch notes down below. If you like what you saw in this update video, like and subscribe, and share this with all frontline combat personnel. Hell, share it with all non-frontline personnel. They need to know this information just as much as you do. And as always, good luck, keep your heads down, and stay in your foxholes. Bear out.